years, as the civilization began to pass, pass westward, it became necessary for the United States to acquire more land from the Indian tribes. Caught Indians being the owners of such vast areas of property, the United States entered into treaty negotiations with our tribes on June 3, 1825. Under the terms of this 1825 treaty, the Kaw Indian ceded to the United States over 40 million acres of property. As a payment for this property, we were to receive livestock, bowls of calico, a school teacher, a blacksmith, chicken, hogs, what have you. Under the second article of the treaty, however, the tribe retained out of the property ceded, some seven and a half million acres known as the tribal reservation, the eastern boundary of which passes directly through the center of Topeka, Kansas today, and it extended west down the river for 30 miles wide and extended to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Under a subsequent article, Article 6 of the Treaty of 1825, the tribe retained for the use of the half-breed members of the tribe a small reservation which began at the tribal reservation and, re and ran east down the river, extending along the north bank of the Kaw River. This half-breed reservation consisted of 23 one-square-mile tracts of property. These half-breed Kaw Indians, which had played a very prominent role in the development of the state of Kansas and also in the development of this particular area of Oklahoma were the offsprings of Kaw Indian women and French fur traders. It was the French fur traders that came with these children and their full blood wives out onto these tracts of property and took up residence and they were the founders of Topeka, Kansas, and began developing that particular area of Kansas. <clears throat> the 1825 treaty was a large, long treaty, and there were a lot of promises made and a lot of agreements reached in that treaty between the Call Indians and the United States. And on December the 30th of 1825, this treaty was proclaimed by the Congress of the United States. And at that point, it became a part of the supreme law of the, of the land. These points have a very important bearing as far as the Indians are concerned and as far as property owners are concerned today. Because little did we know that in 1825, when the Indians who signed the agreement, Indians who could not read nor write, and in all probability could not understand what was being offered to them on a piece of paper, would have such a bearing on land titles in 1973 as it is having. On August the 16th of 1825, the Kansas tribe of Indians were called upon by the United States to enter into their third treaty. Under this treaty, which was a very short treaty, a copy of which also hangs in the other room, the Kaw Indians gave the United States all property on the Santa Fe Trail. This is a roadway leading from Fort Leavenworth down into New Mexico. Santa Fe Trail played a, played a very important role in the development of all of this country. And the Kaw Indians certainly took their part in adding to the development of the country by signing the, the Treaty of 1825, allowing trespass over their property to the Santa Fe Trail. During this particular period of time, The United States was beginning to press the Kaw Indians toward agriculture. 
Detroit Indians, half of them were married to French people. They were beginning to learn the the art of living as non-Indians. And they began adapting themselves to this type of a culture on their own. During the period of 1825 to 1859, the Kaw Indian tribes numbered upwards of 2,000 members. They lived in four villages along the Kaw River. The tribe as a whole was being ruled by Chief White Plume. The tribe was beginning to take up the art of farming, agriculture, raising of livestock, and were quite successful. Then the conditions turned as far as the tribe was concerned. The old records show and indicate that at this period of time, in the 1830s, the Kaw Indians were a group of people that were getting out on their own and they were growing and they were accepting the responsibility of the non-Indians in the community. The promises for the Kaw people at that period of time were very bright. But fate had its hand, and the picture changed. Drought hit Kansas. Not being too well educated in raising the crops, due to the drought, their crops failed. Long winters came, very severe winters. The Kaw Indians were yoked with Indian agents who weren't nice people. The Indian agents prohibited our people from going west and hunting. The Kaw Indians were a timid class of people. The Kaw Indians were a class of people that would not oppose the government because under Article 10 of their 1825 treaty, they agreed that they would not cross the Indian agents, they would not fight trespassers, but that they would voice their complaints to the Indian agents. <coughs> and in return in the treaty for this promise, the United States agreed that in the event of trespass of property, in the event of hunger, that the United States would come to their rescue. So these people sat, and the records clearly show, in many, many instances, that these people allowed their properties to be taken by force and violence, and they sat and did without, to the point that the tribe began, I mean, it become extinct. Due to exposure, hunger and malnutrition to epidemics of smallpox. The tribe was practically completely wiped out in the year 1845. Our numbers had dwindled from close to 2,000 in 1825 to around 300 in 1845. The government came to our people in 1845 <coughs> and told them, we don't want you to ever be hungry again. And if you sell us two million acres of land off of your seven and a half million acres, we will guarantee to you that you will never be hungry, that you will never be cold, that if you're sick, they'll doctor you. So the tribe agreed. But inserted in the 1845 treaty was a clause that if there was not a sufficiency of timber that remained on the remaining portion of their seven and a half million acres, then the government took this property and they would find the Kaw Indians a new home. 
and that new home would be their home forever. The survey notes resulting from the 1845 treaty shows that the surveyors worked two days and they wrote in their notes and they said the winter is bitter the Cheyennes are on the war path so why worry because we will acquire this property as easily as we've acquired the rest so find them a new home so the calls were moved our new home was selected around the site of Council Grove and for the five and a half million acres of property, we received a 20 by 20 mile track of property down in the area of Council Grove. And in 1846, the tribe moved to Council Grove. At this period of time, a very drastic situation had developed. Because we had the reservation split, because we still had the half-breed people trying to live on their small reservation of very fertile properties and lands along the north bank of the Kaw River, extending 23 miles down the river, and some 60 miles south, we had the full blood faction of the tribe. The Indian agent over the Kaw people was not resident among our people. The properties on both reservations were highly prized properties. They were well watered with creeks and rivers, well timbered. That portion that was broken out was very highly productive property. So we began to feel <coughs> perhaps one of the most drastic things that ever happened to us. The influx of the settlers and the trespassers into that area of Kansas. The settlers and the trespassers moved onto the Indian properties, chased the Indians off, took the properties, and acquired title through preemption rights. There were a lot of complaints voiced by non-Indians and Indians alike to the Commissioner of Indian Affairs to Washington. Finally, in 1858, an Attorney General's opinion was given that the Treaty of 1825 was binding, that the United States had the moral obligation <coughs> to protect the people and to remove all intruders off of those properties, and that the President of the United States had the full power to remove all of the settlers and trespassers from these properties. <clears throat> the Attorney General informed the President of the United States to use the full military and carry out the orders of the 1825 Treaty. Weak actions were taken in the 1860-62 to 62 period of time, but nothing materialized. In October of 1859, the call people entered into the last treaty. Under this treaty, we gave to the settlers on the properties at Council Grove all of the property, and we retained for ourselves a three by four mile area. The settlers who were residing on the properties which we retained refused to move more settlers moved in. The half-breeds were completely driven off from their properties in the Topeka area. A number of them killed. They migrated south to the other branch of the tribe to Council Grove. The situation became so acute that finally in 1871 the cause the Osage people to sell us some property. So the Calls decided to sell what property they had in Kansas to the United States 
and to buy from the old sages property elsewhere and to move. So in 1873, the transaction was finally finished, completed, and in April of 1873, the troops from Fort Leavenworth came on to the Council Grove Reservation. The records show where they rounded the Indians up. They kept them in the stockade for several weeks. They counted them by head, and they started their march to Oklahoma. The march took 17 days in order to get to their new home. We settled over at Washunga. Practically immediately, the people erected the school. The work was done by the French people who had married into the tribe, had married the half breed who were well versed in stone masonry and carpenter work. They erected the little stone building that sits over there in Washington, and they opened this as, as a school. In later years, they built the other school, the agent's house, and they built an Indian office building. The Caw Indians began trying to farm to till the soil in Oklahoma as they had in Kansas. And finally, by 1902, through Act of Congress, the United States felt that our people were ready to take allotment. We were one of the first tribes in the United States to take our allotment from severalty. At the time of allotment, all of the call properties in Oklahoma were divided among equally the 247 members in the tribe. We retained at the time of allotment 160 acres to maintain the school, and we retained 20 acres for cemetery purposes. Out of the 20 acres which we retained for cemetery purposes, we used approximately five acres for burial purposes. The remaining 15 acres was used to lease proceeds which we received from the leasing of the 15 acres was used to maintain our cemetery. The Tall Mission School was formally closed around 1905. The buildings have been used periodically by members of the tribe living in them. In 1935, the first building that was erected was restored on the WPA project. My mother made a trip to Washington and petitioned the Bureau of Indian Affairs for a grant to put the Indians to work. And through the $10,000 which she received, the tall Indian boys repaired restored the little stone chapel building at Washunga. In 1946, under the Indian Claims Commission Act, the Caw tribe filed their claim in accordance with the Act of Congress on all of the properties which they had lost in Kansas. In 1947 and 48, the trust responsibility on the allotted land to the individual Indians terminated. Apparently there was no one in the Congress that took the initiative to introduce legislation for the people in order to keep the trust status for the tall <coughs> Indians. When the trust expired on their allotted property, 
the Kaw Indians became ineligible to participate in housing, home improvement programs, hospitalization, government loans, scholarships, and any of the other programs that are offered by the Bureau of Indian Affairs to Indians. In 1954, the Kaw tribe received a judgment from the Indian Claims Commission on the five and a half million acres that the government took because of an insufficiency of timber under the 1845 treaty. The Indian Claims Commission found judgment to the tribe six and a half million dollars. The Department of Justice filed an appeal and the tribe accepted, in order to get all appeals dropped, the tribe accepted two million three hundred thousand dollars, ten percent of which went to attorneys, and another ten percent for expenses and court costs. The tribe retained nothing in the fund. And that's about the point where I entered the picture. Since that time, our council has been successful in getting hospitalization for our people. At present time, we have, I would say, 20 students going to school on scholarships. We don't have a housing pro program yet. Uh, I had the contract to sign from the council which we'll have a meeting tomorrow evening. Hopefully the council will authorize and sign the contract for a housing project for our people. We have recently had to move our cemetery to make way for the Caldan Reservoir. You go out east of town and you see the dam and all of its magnificence standing there, flood lights, flooding it. The people that look at that don't know the heartache and the hell that I've had to go through in order to appease and to pacify the feelings of the people whom I represent. The whole project, the removal of the cemetery, which took place the last summer, was a hard period of time for our people. But I have to commend the people because we have not one dissension out of all of the people, out of the 650 graves that were removed. We had no trouble whatsoever. The people accepted it. They allowed us to move the bodies to the new site and the location. The incidents that occurred during the removal of these graves, the sites that the people saw, and in some instances, the inefficiencies of the contractors, the Corps of Engineers, and the removal process were overlooked by the people. They talked about it. And of course, they came and told me what was happening. But there wasn't a person that, that condemned the government for these actions taking place. Our properties were all condemned. And for all of our holdings in Oklahoma by the Corps of Engineers, which we have nothing now except five acres cemetery, we've received $7,645. The people haven't touched this. We have one claim through the Court of Claims. The court gave the order to the Senate two years ago to pay for the half-breed reservation and to pay the half-breed people of the Kaw tribe to the tune of $40 million and we can get no action. The old claims which were dismissed on the Aboriginal title claims our riverbed claim. We have high hopes we're going to get a hearing on those 
sometime this year before the Indian Claims Commission. You can talk in terms of millions of acres of property. You can talk in terms of $40 million. You can talk in terms of numbers of people. But God willing, that 1973 is going to be the year that our people will get some compensation for the properties and injustices that they have suffered over the past 150 years. <coughs> we have a good call council at the present time. We have the cooperation of a majority of the people. Indians are like anyone else. When you have many as three together, you're going to have dissension. But by and large, we're all more or less in the same boat for paddling and rowing in the same direction. I wanted to bring these thoughts to you people this evening because I'm always happy in order to share the business that we have had. And I sincerely hope that I haven't left the impression that I'm the type of the chairman that comes before groups of people and want people to feel sorry for me because this isn't it. But I want the public to know, to understand, and to realize that we, too, have problems. And I want the people to understand and realize the actions that have been taken and the actions that you will see in the papers that are going to be taken. And I don't want these actions to be mixed with the militant actions that you read in the paper of several months ago because we have no part of this AIM or this militant action group. Our method of doing business is above table type of a transaction and we are merely trying to get some help for the people and to try to settle the confused titles that exists in the state of Kansas and in Oklahoma today. I appreciate being with you people this evening, and if I can give any help to your group and organization in the future, uh, please call on me. Thank you.